In this video, I'm going to show you how to add tension, conflict, and stakes to your story. And by how adding these three things to your writing, you're going to have a story that gets readers invested, keeps the story interesting, and have your readers engaged and dying to know what happens to the very end. And after going over these three interconnected elements, I'm going to hone in on conflict to share with you the incredibly effective way to keep your readers addicted to your writing all the way through. Now, like I just said, the tension, conflict, and stakes in your story are all interconnected. That being said, they're not all the same thing and they're not all used in the same way. But what exactly are they? Where do they come from? How are they used in your story? The very best way I found to parse these three things out is to ask yourself these three questions. Number one, what do your characters want? Number two, what is keeping them from getting what they want? And number three, what happens if they don't get what they want? See, these three questions and their answers are all connected, just like the tension, conflict, and stakes in your story. So let's get into how we use these in our writing. Figuring out what your character wants, giving them a goal, creates tension because it makes your reader feel that suspense, anticipation, and curiosity. The curiosity comes from when your reader is discovering how your character is going to go about achieving their goal. The suspense and anticipation comes about from seeing if the character is going to pull it off. Now, of course, there's going to be some internal tension within your story as your characters are working through these feelings too. But as a writer, it's also important to keep your reader in mind. First, have your characters go through some kind of change. This can be going from point A to B or some sort of change in belief, any kind of change really. But you can use this change to create uncertainty and get your readers asking questions. Questions that they're gonna wanna know the answers to and thus they just gotta read one more chapter. Second, think of how and when the reader learns new information. If we think of some of the genres we most associate with tension, like mysteries and thrillers, the tension really comes from the need to discover new information. Who's the killer? Has my spy cover been blown? Who can I trust? If the reader already knows the outcome of any given situation, it can often kill the tension, but not always. Here's what I mean. If you want to take this tension thing to the next level, consider when your reader learns information in relation to your characters in your story. Now, the reader is oftentimes riding along with the perspective of the protagonist, so if that applies, you can sub in protagonist here when I'm saying reader. If the reader is discovering new information that another character already knows, that's a mystery. If a reader is discovering information at the same time as the characters, that's suspense. If a reader discovers information before the character, that's dramatic irony. Think of the end of Romeo and Juliet or Oedipus. But in all of these, there's still a question, some uncertainty, whether that's what the information actually is or how the information will affect the characters in pursuit of their goal. If you want a compelling and satisfying story, you gotta throw your characters some curveballs. It's gotta be some kind of struggle. This is where we bring in conflict. Now, conflict is a wide and varied topic, so for this video, I'll only be able to scratch the surface, but comment down below if you want a more detailed video on the topic. For now, let's talk about what conflict is. Simply put, conflict is any obstacle or opposition to your character. It can come from a multitude of places and in a multitude of ways. Conflict can be internal, that mental and emotional struggle, or external, the physical, tangible obstacles that a character has to overcome to reach their goal. There are also philosophical conflicts dealing with differing worldviews, values, and morals that the character might come up against. But when people are talking about conflict, a lot of the time they're talking about the external conflict, because this is a type of conflict that pushes the plot forward. In addition to looking at different types of conflict, we can also look at where the conflict is coming from. Folks can break this down into four, five, six, however many different categories, but I like to think of three main sources of conflict. Character versus self, character versus character, and character versus environment. Character versus self can be that internal kind of conflict where the character is battling with their own misbeliefs or conflicting values and priorities. But it could also be more of an external struggle, say if their body is wearing down, making it hard for them to achieve their goal. Character versus character is where you're going to find your story's antagonist, but you can also find this kind of struggle with allies. 
Maybe you have the same goal, but you have different reasons for going after it. Conversely, maybe your motivations and values are in alignment, but you see different ways of seeking your end result. Character versus environment conflict can look a lot of different ways. It can be a treacherous physical environment that the character has to traverse, or a character that has to deal with societal expectations that they don't necessarily want to appease. Or maybe there's some sort of magic or technology that exists in their environment that makes getting to their finish line that much harder. I know some people like to classify some of those examples as their own category of conflict, but personally, I like to think of it as three main categories with subcategories going all the way down. And there is so much more to say about conflict. And if you're anything like me, this stuff is really interesting. So while I can't get to it all right now, I do have a little extra bonus conflict tip for you at the end of the video. Before we get into the stakes of your story, if you're enjoying this video and getting a lot out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps me out in growing this channel and connecting with more aspiring writers out there. If you remember back to the three questions that I asked at the beginning of this video, the stakes are related to the question, what happens if your character doesn't get what they want? The stakes are the consequences of your character either succeeding or failing. It's something that they'll either gain or lose. Your story needs stakes because if there's no consequence, there's no reason for your reader to care about the outcome of your story. Think about it. If a story is about a person reading a book by the end of the day, but there's no consequence of whether they succeed or fail, that's pretty boring. But if the story is about a person who's trying to read a book by the end of the day because the next day they have this huge test on it and that's going to determine whether or not they get into the college of their dreams, that is way more interesting. Plus, you can see there's more tension in discovering if they'll get it done, and there's the conflict point of a ticking clock. The obstacle is them running out of time. But when it comes to your stakes, the number one rule to keep in mind is to make the stakes matter to your characters. If you have that emotional impact on your characters, it will in turn have an emotional impact on your readers. You'd care a lot more if the character finishes that book, if all their hopes and dreams for the future are tied up in their success than if they were just bored and happened to cross it when they were looking for something to do. So the tension is a feeling that the readers get as they're seeing if the character will succeed. The conflict are the things that are getting in their way and the stakes are the consequences of whether they succeed or fail. All three play off of each other and work together to make your writing spellbinding. That being said, let's go back to looking at conflict for a moment. This tip, while centered around conflict, will have an equally impactful effect on your tension and stakes of your story. So here it is. In a story, the characters will usually have one big overarching goal. You know, Harry Potter wants to defeat Voldemort. But throughout the story, the characters will have a bunch of mini goals that will help them along the way. So the key to keeping your readers addicted all the way through to the end of your story is to use escalating conflict also referred to as progressive complications. What this means is as your story moves along, the conflict that your characters will face will get bigger and bigger and have more and more of an impact. Now, if you were to graph the intensity of the conflict in your story, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight ascending line. It could be kind of jagged with dips here and there, but it should have a general upward trajectory. The reason for this is because if you have some crazy intense conflict, like fighting the arch nemesis in a battle to the death, that becomes the new baseline for conflict in your story. After that point, the reader isn't going to care about some snide comment made by a random stranger, unless that snide comment has an effect on the character that's roughly equal or greater than the fight. And with that, keep in mind that if you raise the conflict too high too quickly, especially if your characters win, the rest of your story might not believably be able to top that. Another thing to think about when it comes to escalating conflict is that not all conflict is the same. We went over a few types of conflicts, so consider adding a variety into your story. If every conflict point is a fight scene, that's boring and predictable. Even if you were the most talented writer when it comes to fight scenes and somehow you managed to captivate your audience every single time, they wouldn't care about the rest of your story. But if some conflict comes from combat, some comes from your character's insecurity, some comes from a new skill they have to learn, that's a well-rounded story that has some life breathed into it. 
My last tip for escalating conflict is this. Let your characters lose sometimes. You gotta make your characters fight for what they want. But even if they come up against obstacles, if they win every single time, that's boring and predictable. And you might get a Mary Sue situation on your hands. If it's uncertain if the characters will win, the tension will be through the roof. Plus you have an opportunity to show consequences, making your stakes feel more real. Writing amazing conflict and the tension and stakes that come along with it are just one part of writing an amazing story. If you want to know how to write dope characters, check out this video here. I have a ton of writing videos that are in the works, so if you want to see what's coming out next, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And of course, thank you for watching as always. Bye guys. Peace.